Hey, welcome once again. There you are, right there, wherever you are. Here we are in our downstairs worship area along with my co-host, Pastor Brad Lewis. Great to be with you. My name is Jason, lead pastor here. We are part of First Baptist Church Fordo. Hopefully, you probably already know that by now because you're either on one of our social media platforms, you're on our website, finding what we call Table Talk. This is an opportunity as an extension of the Sunday morning message. Whatever series we might be in, we'll have a table talk that's a counterpart to that. And simply, this is a platform. This is a way for you to dig a little deeper into what we've been talking about in our series. We have a discussion guide that goes along with that. And so every week, you can count on these moments. We hope that they bless you, but it's an opportunity for you right where you are to invite folks. Maybe this becomes the catalyst to your next Bible study. And a lot of our life groups, I shouldn't say a lot, but some of them from time to time use our discussion guide and they follow along and they use this as a catalyst for their Bible study. So Brad, what do our friends need to know? What do they need to have to make the most of this Table Talk experience. You heard Pastor Jason talk about our discussion guide, and, and every week this is created, and it's from the most recent previous Sunday message, which is actually recorded right here in this room. This is our modern worship area, and we provide this for you to, as Jason said, to go deeper. Now, you can find this as well as the actual message that was preached on Sunday and the table talks that even as we're recording now, you can go to our website, fbcfo.org, and I know you want to point with me, and you'll go to the top right no, it's under this, this right, yes. And, and what will happen is you'll find the drop-down menu under watch. And if you'll click on watch, what will drop down the most recent sermon series will be at the top chronologically. You'll be able to go into there. Inside of that, the most recent Sunday message. And underneath that, you will find this discussion guide as well as the table talk. Always, though, we want to say God's Word needs to yeah. be there because that's what we base everything on is the Word of God because we believe it is true and we don't waver from that. Right. This series has been somewhat topical. We've been moving around to different areas of the New Testament primarily. And we've been asking this question, what does it look like to be a spiritually, what does it mean to be a spiritually healthy church? There is a tendency for us to evaluate based on what we see on the outside. You know, the size of a church building, the size of the crowds, the number of programs and things like that, the budget or things you might look at, things that you could see from the outside, people will say, well, that must be a healthy church. Jesus warns us, well, maybe not. If we're not disciples truly, genuinely following him, knowing him and helping others do that, then maybe we're not as healthy as we ought to be. And so we've been discussing the pathways Mm -hmm. towards greater spiritual healthiness, such as It's not just about having programs, but are those programs intentionally driving the mission and helping us be closer to Jesus, more like him? What if our programs were more mission ministry minded about Jesus? That was one thing. Another thing was, yeah, we're we're a church under the authority of the word of God, but are we approaching it more for information Mm -hmm. or really are we seeking transformation to be changed by the word and the spirit of God to be more like Jesus? We've talked about how If we're going to be a pathway towards true spiritual healthiness, we can't be satisfied with attendance. Mm -hmm. That attendance is good, and we want to be able to use that as an opportunity to begin a relationship. But if your standard is just high attendance, and you're really not digging deeper and leading people to get closer to one another in in more focused, gospel-centered relationships, disciple-making relationships, whether it's Sunday school or life groups, small groups, or even mentoring one-on-one disciple making, if you're not leading people into those smaller relationships, then really you're missing the greater opportunity. And this has been our big goal. And we've, we said this last time, what if every member of your church was a minister? Mm-hmm. That, that really, if we're going to be like Jesus, follow Jesus, we need to be doing what Jesus did. We need to be his hands and feet. And so we threw that out there. And last week we were talking about the things that we as ministers would be doing in order to grow to be the minister, to be that equipping center here as a church. If you thought of your church as an equipping center to help you be the minister that God wants you to be. Now, here we are, we're following up Brad and I on the final edition, which we're thinking about, okay, if we're committed to that pathway of greater health, 
What are the things that will make this church stand apart, that would give us a uniqueness? And, and sadly, as we think about the status of the church today and in our day and age, are we really producing? Are we loving people, leading people, and really seeing people raised up to launch and be sent out the way that we ought to be doing? Truly, a loving church is going to stand out. Right. A church that's leading well is going to stand apart. And a church that is raising up the next generation to be future ministers and sending out, where are our church planners going to come from? Where are our missionaries and pastors and ministers, are going to, where are they going to come from? Where are our moms and dads who just simply want to raise their kids and be disciple makers, no matter what their occupation might be, that they are focused and salty and ready for the mission? Where's that going to come from? You and I were talking about this in your time as a student minister you had folks that you would intentionally see to be raised up that way. And, and we're going to talk about how the Philippian church was doing that. And Paul, the apostle, calls them out as being unique right. in many ways. Sadly, why is that so unique? Even in your ministry, you'd say you've seen those things happen, but they don't seem to be happening enough. You know? Right, yes. And, and I think that's true that they're not happening enough. And, and maybe we're not as churches intentional about yeah. this. Um, you have heard me, if you've watched any of these before, Jason, you know that I love 2 Timothy 2.2 mm -hmm. because it, Paul is talking to Timothy, telling him that the things you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust the faithful men who will teach others. He talks about multiplying yourself right. and others. And I'm so grateful that those who poured into me had that uh, idea. It wasn't loving me and, and, and leading me and launching me just so I can do my thing, but it's so I would do the same thing to pour into others. And, right. and you know, I can think of some, um, some examples that uh, of young men and, and women that they came broken. Um, I'm thinking of one young man. It was, he was actually um, a, a professional man. Uh, he he, he uh, was a school teacher and circumstances beyond his control he, when I met him, he was so broken, and it was someone I could love on, someone that I could encourage, someone that I could pour into, and he happened to be a musician, and I was able to love on him and encourage him and, and see him, his gifts develop, mm -hmm. and he went on to become a worship pastor, a worship leader. Uh, I think of another young man who I thought was going to be a worship leader. He was a gifted, gifted high school keyboard player, singer. He was a songwriter. And I thought, man, this guy is going to go places. And so I wanted to encourage him, pour into him. I was a youth pastor at the time. And I just saw, boy, this is going to go well for him. Well, come to find out that after he graduated from college, he just got a job. Now, I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> I knew God had a call in his life, and then he reached out to me, oh, about 12 years after he had graduated from high school, and he said, Brad, God has led me to platform to start a church in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is just across the river from Manhattan. In fact, all those cool pictures of Manhattan, they're filmed in Hoboken, and, and he, he has started a work there, wow. and he, he works at a coffee shop. That's his job, but his whole goal is to minister and to pour into others. Um, I'm thinking of another young man who he, he was pretty much about himself and all that he could do, and this is great. He was, he was athletic, and he was pretty smart, and man, God got a hold of his life. Mm -hmm. And after I had been able to pour into him and see his life be the best he could be, as just a great guy, well, God called him into the ministry. Right now, he's pastoring one of the largest churches in Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. And this isn't about me. It's about I was part of the conduit that someone poured into me, and I was able to pour into others. Right. And I just gave you those three examples of young men who now are pouring into others as God's using them to minister. Man, those are great examples. We need more of we them. We do. And we're going to turn to Philippians 4 in just a moment. That's in your New Testament. So that's where we're going to be, Philippians chapter 4. Just while you're beginning to turn there, just think about this. And we stated it yesterday that a healthy church will stand apart. Mm. It will happen. There is a uniqueness there, sadly, because I think there's an epidemic of churches that are selfish, unfaithful, mm -hmm. just not loving and leading and raising up uh, future ministers the way that they ought to. And Part of the challenge that we laid on our folks here yesterday was we get this concept, especially in political years, of the American dream. Hmm. And, but that tends to be more about secular careers and material things and making a better life for yourself. Not that all of that is bad. 
But I would love for us spiritually to hijack that and say, you know what? If we have universities and trade schools and and all kinds of places for someone to grow in a vocation, why can't we come along as the church and spiritually raise up people to also be better, Mm. you know, to be the ministers that they're meant to be? If we're going to raise up folks for certain careers in academia, through academia, why can't we come along and raise up the next generation spiritually? I think the future of the church depends on that, and God has promised he's going to bring this to completion. So he expects that we're going to be doing it. Some churches will be doing this, and the Philippian church was in a very unique way. So if you found that, we're going to read this before we turn this over to you with the discussion guide to be able to dig into it yourself. Read with me Philippians 4, beginning in verse 14. Now, Paul, the apostle, is in prison because of the gospel, because of his ministry, but he's writing to them, thanking them for how they stood apart. He says, it was kind of you to share my trouble. Paul's persecution, the challenges of his ministry and church planting, there were many challenges and adversaries. They shared in that, well, how? He says, well, you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, in the beginning of his ministry, When he had left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with him in giving and receiving except that church only. Even in Thessalonica, he says, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. In other words, he's talking about what motivated the love behind the gift, their, their true spiritual maturity and authenticity, and how hospitable they were, how loving they were, that drove them to continue to help Paul, even when it was risky, even when it was hard. And he says, I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. Verse 19, And my God, he says, will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And he tags this prayer at the end, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Here's a church. And we don't know how big they were, how many people, however big or however small, they were faithful. When other churches were not supporting Paul, they were supporting. And that partnership words mean they were invested And they were involved, even to the point that they had raised up a young minister named Epaphroditus from their own congregation, raised him up to send him to come along to help Paul as well. And it's interesting that Paul says, as you've been helping me, God is the one supplying. He's the one that will supply for you. And part of that was our takeaway of saying, you know what, if churches would simply focus on being disciples who make disciples, if we could be white hot on that mission God's going to take care of us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to sit around and worry about finances or focus too much. Now, we should have budgets and be accountable and be organized and and have systems and things. I mean, there's a business side that we need to be good at in church. Paul's not saying that, but he's saying God is the one taking care of you if you will be faithful to the mission. And he promises that. That is a commitment that when we're faithful to him, man, he is faithful to provide what we need. And it comes from him. And so that's our call and that's our challenge is to think about, okay, if we truly are authentically like this church, loving people and investing in people and investing in the mission and committed to that, to see ministers raised up and sent out, wow, what that would look like in our day and time and how we would stand apart. Yes, it really would because we need to realize that this verse 19, it says, and God will meet all of your needs. God will supply all your needs. Sometimes we take that out of focus, out of context, and we say, well, man, just just ask God. He said he'll do it. But everything that happened before that, because they, Paul was identifying, they were investing into him and his ministry and realizing that it was the gift that he was seeking. It was the fruit of the gift in the giver. And that's what he was seeing. And then he could say, guess what? If you do those things, if you'll love, if you'll lead, if you'll launch, God will supply, God will provide, God will bless you and make sure that every need is taken care of. It's good stuff there. I love it. And I love how he ends on that prayer of seeing a forever, an an eternal Mm -hmm. focus. And, And it's like 
it's, it's like he was saying, this church investing in the moment was really investing in the future. Right. That there was something, there was longevity to their ministry that maybe they didn't even see the potential. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that while they're helping Paul, Paul's writing scripture mm -hmm. inspired by God that we're reading today that 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, this Philippian church had an investment in. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize right. that we'd be reading and talking about this thousands of years later. But that's the kind of investment when we say forever and ever, God be glory, amen. That's the kind of thing we're talking about is little things we can do now that will make that bigger investment right and Pretty you know cool. as you as you said that and and even as we were talking earlier um it reminded me a story about my mom yeah and my mom has uh, in 2015 went to be with the lord and but for about 15 17 years before that mm -hmm. uh she was investing into a ministry in guatemala mm -hmm. i didn't know this right. and, and 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 but the person who was in charge of that ministry shared this with me after my mom passed away my mom was giving five dollars a month <laughs> mom didn't have five dollars a month she was a very very limited income older person <laughs> that's all she had and 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 yet she still gave that unbeknownst to my mom investing into this ministry in guatemala this person who i came to know mm -hmm. who had this ministry is now investing in our ministry in two wells that's cool and so as we're working with the muslims and seeking to share christ with them those people who are coming to know christ way down the line my mom had no idea what her gift was doing was causing that to happen that yeah. now people are coming to christ in northern india in kashmir as a result of that yeah and i don't know about you but that encourages me to be faithful because even in the little things God, he can do great things with the results. I mean, ultimately, our, our role is to be faithful. We mm -hmm. leave the results up to God. Right. But it motivates me to be faithful now because mm -hmm. you just never know right. what God's going to do. We're going to pray over you. In fact, in fact, Pastor Brad's going to have that final prayer with that kind of encouragement in mind. And in essence, when we talk about this church being an equipping center, mm -hmm. That's one of the resources right now, this, these moments yes. where we share together to say, hey, we want to help you. We've provided questions that can certainly bless you as you dig into the word more deeply. But there are other people in your life mm -hmm. or maybe in your area of influence that you could be leading to go through these things. And we simply are a catalyst and a resource to help make that happen. So bless you in that. Brad's going to pray for us. And then it is all yours. Lord, right now we come before you and we say, make this scripture come alive in the lives of those who are watching, in the lives of those who will study it, in the lives of those who will answer the questions on the discussion guide. Lord, in the lives of those who will meet and, and pour into other people using this as a springboard. Lord, we desire to see transformation. We want this church to become a church that truly does love, truly does lead, and truly does launch because that is the expression of your kingdom. That is what will cause your mission to move forward here on our earth right now and in the future. So Lord, change us, transform us, make us that way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brad mentioned our website, fbcfo.org. Maybe you already know it. You've already clicked on watch. You've already pressed all those things and gone through all of those things to find our series. By the way, you click into the series and it expands. It gives you all of those opportunities, all of those options. Also, up there with the watch tab is a connect tab. We would love for you to click on that. And there's ways for you to email or reach out to us, leave us messages, be able to share with us. How's this working? How can we make this better? How is this a resource, good, bad, or ugly? that we are wanting to utilize and leverage for you. So we would love your feedback on those things as much as possible. We look forward to sharing this time with you once again next week. We'll be here, hopefully, right now. Um, we are getting ready to hand this off to you, but next week, look for Table Talk. We'll be into a different sermon series, moving towards Christmas for us, 2022, hard to believe, but we'll be into a new series. But until we share that moment with you, Make the most of this moment. We're cheering for you in Jesus' name.